What is up, everybody? Austin and David, uh, two thirds of the version reviews, 17, Um We are going to start first two in our review of the Sam Adams Summer Mixed Pack. Uh, David suggested we try it. Uh, first, we have the uh, Samuel Adams Raspberry Lemon Ghost. Refreshingly tart, the light fruit fruitiness to it. Here we have the um, Golden Ale. Sort of the sweet, smooth, and refreshing. Uh, which one do you think we should uh, tackle first? It's a really good question. I, I would say is go with the gold nail first and okay. finish with the raspberry lemon second. Okay. I feel that um, the, the sweeter uh, flavors in the beginning uh, will set up the more bitter beer first. Better than the other way around. And if you're going to drink some good Sam Adams beer, you're going to put them in some Sam Adams glasses. Now you don't have to put Sam Adams beer in a Sam Adams glass. It's just. And as but, but, for but, but, the. Oops, sorry, didn't right? you say the other day uh, when I was uh, drinking from a, a Guinness, uh, you said, uh, hey, why did you put into a set? Well, that's Guinness. Well, oh, that's, that's Guinness. That's Guinness. That's Guinness. You said that uh, everybody in their grandmama to... knows when you drink Guinness, you put it in an actual Guinness. <laughs> everybody. Knows. I heard that in Ireland, you can be uh, verbally assaulted, or worse, uh, if you were to put a Guinness into a regular glass. But you know, in America, you know, some of us don't care too much. Here you go. I'll take it too seriously. <laughs> And as per the advice of our friend Eric Overland on our last review, um, we got Beer Fest on in the background. Boom. Great friggin' movie. I forgot it was on Netflix, so I went to Amazon to try and find it, and they wanted to charge us 15 bucks to buy it. Like, Fuck it. So I go to Netflix, it's all set. Wow. Unbelievable bubbling on in this Pilsner glass right here. That's it really is. Uh, I have two Pilsner glasses, but they're Budweiser ones. So I didn't want to put good craft beer in Budweiser. Yeah, yeah, of course, know. of course not, of course. Unless it's the only glass you have that's not dirty or broken, then go right ahead. Of course, of or course. Just drink straight from the bottle. <laughs> Yep, uh, so we're, we're looking at a uh, potentially sweet beer with not much hops. The, uh, ABV um, on this thing. Five point, or 5% ABV, 12 IBUs. The, uh, so all these beers, pretty good to, uh, to drink on a, uh, on a hot summer's day. I uh, wish that we had a hot summer's day today. Hey, some people in the room would probably debate you on that. <laughs> well... <laughs> Certainly, uh, you know, Corona's always out there as a as a go to for a hot summer's day. No doubt about that. Nope. But if you wanted uh, more flavor, yeah, look no further than uh, these uh, not heavy, not heavy beers, but still flavorful. Very. Um, smells good too. Quite a variety of flavors. Cheers. You know, to the untrained eye, uh, that could look. Suspiciously, like, yeah, you know. like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I Let's know. Let's not say the name, but yeah, I know, I know that it's it's not pale yellow, but Don't it, say it's it. not, it's not uh, golden, uh, it's not, it's not uh, amber red. It's well, that's good. It's real good. It's not golden amber. It's smooth. Now you see, it's not. It's not hoppy at all. I mean, it only has 12 IBUs. And um, really, when you get below 15 IBUs, you cannot taste any hops. It's, no. a, it's impossible um, for, the, for the human uh, taste buds to, uh, to detect any hoppiness. There are some, but it's just so muted right here, 12 IBUs. For anybody who doesn't know what an IBU is, it's called the International Bitterness Unit. It's uh, it's how they measure uh, hop bitterness, hop quantity. Uh, usually, IPAs run about 65 IBUs, and at the high end, they can go as high as 95. And then past uh, 95, you, you really can't tell 
if it's hot any more than it already is, it's bitter and you you can't tell. It can be 115 IBUs and honestly, you can't you're, tell. You go there? Uh, few, few do. Uh, very, very few do. Uh, Sorry about I had the uh, Hopageddon, for example, that runs 100 IBUs. And it, it, it has a great name to it, Hopageddon. I'll be honest. Before I knew what IBUs were, because I still drank crap beer, I just never paid attention to the IBUs. I never knew puppy use can go that height. Yeah, well, if you have a hoppy beer, you you uh you can bank on it too. Speaking, Speaking of hoppy beers, but but these are but these are really low. It, it's Sapporo, like Sapporo has no hops in it. You know, beers like these are have uh, dominant malts uh, and really nothing else. They, they really don't care for hops on this one. It's for like for example the, Dun the Dunkel Bison, another very sweet beer. Somewhat darker than, than these beers and from Germany. Uh, they just don't have any hops to it. There's no need uh, for this exact style uh, to do so. Um, and this is a perfect beer for those that do not like the hop flavor at all and want an easy drinking beer. Very enjoyable. Very, very enjoyable, smooth. You can have it out on a hot summer day. Uh, if you're not if you're not desiring a Mexican beer, uh, like Corona or like Dos Corona or Dos Equis, which are typical summer beers. This beer right here for the easy great. drinking uh, person who doesn't like hot sauce, great, great, and no no stunkiness to it. That is the main thing. How would you compare this to the regular Sam Adams summer? Uh, the summer ale uh, has added lemons to it, and uh, the, the grains of paradise. The grains of paradise uh, add this uh, peppery uh, additional. Uh, spicy notes to it uh, that mix with the lemon in a way that only uh, Sam Adams could understand how to. Some, Grains of Par Paradise was a, a new uh, add to, to beers. Uh, Sam Adams really uh, was a groundbreaking uh, idea to use these uh, uh, these uh, these uh, different uh, spices that had never been used before. Uh, only Dr. Shad has really taken uh, spicing up beers further uh, than Sam Adams has in recent memory. And there are other breweries that we that we do not know. But for the, at least for the big breweries, uh, Sam Adams and uh, Dr. Shad are just trying to push push the limits on how they can spice their beers up. And um, the summer ale is ground is square one when it comes to spicing up beers but this is definitely right here uh nothing like that this this is this is a straight up uh beer not fooling anyone with uh what exactly it is uh it's a simple beer for a simple person as you can see here uh uh on the label it's a uh, it's a hammock it's, got a banana hammock it's a banana hammock and uh I'm just messing with you you know what a banana hammock actually is that's, sorry it's an actual hammock you got me. It, it's, a, it's a hammer. No, the hammer cup. I thought you were serious. I, I had a moment. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it, you, you see, so this is connoting a a, um, a really a beer that you can just relax, not have to be blown away with any flavors that are up in your face. It's just it's just cool, calm, and collected. So what a lot of people uh, might not know about. Um, and it's a shame that this is in a six-pack because I think that Sam Adams could sell quite a bit of these. They, they should. They, they really should make a, this gold nail a six-pack because uh, it would probably sell around this time. Like oh. off the shelf. The problem with the mixed packs is that somewhere. you have all these other beer styles that honestly people that like this, they might not, not be like so much right. into those. Like the Sam Ale got the, the strong lemon. The, our beer, the next beer coming up, has these uh, added uh, flavors that might work for others with, with the certain palate. But you know, this beer and that beer might might be for two different right. tastes. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll definitely see uh, which style, which flavor is more dominant in, in the next one coming up. Uh, but uh, definitely this one, I could uh, man, this is a session beer at the fullest, and it has five point seven percent alcohol by volume. So. Uh, you can uh, also feel pretty good at the same time. 
actually five percent alcohol by volume. So it's not it's not gonna even uh, not gonna even make you feel like that you maybe drank too much. Maybe three of them will get you feeling good. Three will get you uh, feeling, feeling good. pretty good on, on the beach. Um, definitely or a football game. Definitely give this a, a thumbs up or two. I you know I can rate this. Uh, 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 according to the rest of the beers in the entire universe of beers, it, it won't get a high score. It won't get like an eight, an eighty-five or anything like that. But it has its own place in the beer universe. And for what it is, I gotta give it two thumbs up. Uh, I feel like the flavors are not two thumbs and two pinkies. Is it? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, definitely. But for the for the serious beer people out there, uh, and I could. Definitely rate it uh, amongst everything that's out there. It, it won't necessarily cut it, you know, when it comes to the elite beer. But, hey, that's not what we're going for with some of these beers. We're going for what is drinkable and uh, that stereotypical beer on the beach. And uh, I must say, good job, Sam Adams. Um, Great job. And uh, Good job, well, Sam Adams. You got a treat. Absolutely. Uh, it's a treat. I went to uh, Funky Buddha Maple Bacon Coffee Porter Fest 2017, bought a case. And next, I'm going to go next year, actually gift a ticket with the case. Uh -huh. Get a case of the Maple Bacon Coffee Porter. I have, one bo I have one bottle left from that case from last year, AJ. Uh -huh. One bottle left. So and so we were going to later on, on bust it out. Later on, we're going to bust days. that open and try it. Great. Sounds great. Uh, and I know that uh, when it comes to annual uh, uh, beer uh, beer fests, for example, always have her. Speaking of beer fest. And speaking of beer fest, of course, we have a uh, beer fest in the background today. Um, <laughs> following through here, uh, for sure. Every time we do, whenever we do reviews, we should try to find a beer related movie or something or documentary and have it on in the background. Interesting idea. Interesting idea. Uh, for sure. Uh, um, I could drink this all day. I won't, but I could. Oh, we only have two. Yeah. You, you, have, you would have to buy like four 12 packs to, to get a six pack uh, of, of, of these beers. And unfortunately, unfortunately I don't like every, don't really like every beer. I mean, you, you got a style. You're not gonna like every single beer in the mix pack, so right. you just you understand that hey, you know, you got this, and maybe you can petition Sam Adams to I don't know make a six pack. Hey, they can certainly take over Cherry Wheat any day. Please, oh, yeah. Sam Adams, I beg you. We love you guys, but we, we love you, Sam Adams. But please substitute Cherry Wheat for a different beer and make that a six pack. And preferably a golden ale. And retire cherry wheat. Or at least put it on suspension for a while. Um, unless, you know, uh, maybe we could try it one day and uh, bite the bullet and maybe, maybe it's good. Maybe, it, maybe it's maybe, changed. Maybe it's changed. The last time I had... Uh, maybe we should give it a chance. Maybe maybe we should give it a chance. The last time I had cherry wheat was... Hey, Tony. Five years ago. Like? It was about uh, five years ago. And... You know, um, maybe they changed some sort of uh, combination of flavors to make it less like a Luton's cherry cough, you know, kind of like a, a cough drop. You know, that's what my dad said when he tried. He, he couldn't, he got to take it. He told me, like, you can have it. Get, it, get out of my face at night. Oh, hell no with that natty ice crap. No, no. <laughs> oh, man. No. You guys want us to review... No. Uh, Review bad beer. <laughs> no, I am. I would not touch Natty Ice with a ten foot pole, even if it's full. Nice South Park reference. <laughs> yeah, I. I <laughs> Which episode was that? Oh, I would not touch that with a ten foot pole. I, you, they're talking about a bunch of uh, societal issues, and like when people bring it up, they went, "I'm not touching that with a ten foot pole." It's what wouldn't South Park? Go? Wouldn't stuff right. <laughs> yeah, right. Of course. So, not surprising. Next but, beer we're gonna was, do. Next beer we're gonna do is the uh, the raspberry lemon gauche. Uh, really, um, should be uh, you uh, want to lots of flavor. Uh, work that for one video. Or you want to do a separate? Um, we can uh, do a separate. A separate. Okay. Take a. We'll I, be I back. See, we're gonna do the same. We're gonna we're gonna do the same video. 
Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna do the same. Uh uh-uh. uh. Tony, stop with that crap. No. That is not great. <laughs> I don't care how cheap it is. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can do that. Like, maybe maybe we can uh, rate beer. Maybe we can rate uh, uh, beer like that, you know, from like, like a top 10 or something. Like if there was a truck full of beer that spilled over on the highway. And it was Natty Ice. <laughs> Wouldn't feel so bad. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We've seen a couple of, of, of trucks. I would hope. I would definitely hope the driver. As long as the driver is good, but we we've seen, we've seen drivers. Um, we've seen trucks actually cr- uh, roll over and a bunch of beer. Uh, I think we've seen on sad. Facebook quite a bit. It's very sad, but regardless of the beer, no matter how crappy it is, seeing beer. So. But we'll let you know how this one is, Zena. Well, uh, 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 Zena, Zena, I know you're, you're late, uh, but uh, we were just reviewing the uh, the Golden Ale from Sam Adams. Give her a quick rundown. Man. And uh, it's a very, very uh, smooth beer. Uh, it's not very strong. It's it's not hoppy it at all. It has a subtle sweetness to it. It has a very subtle sweetness great to it. Great aftertaste. It has a great aftertaste. Uh, very uh, subtly sweet. You know, not too sweet to where it's it's a uh, cloying sweet. It's it's just right. It's five percent alcohol by volume. I feel it's a great substitution for uh, for those other beach beers out there that have this skunky uh, taste. I, I feel that Corona and Heineken these beers have just a bit of skunkiness to it, which which I feel is a slightly off putting. This is really um, sweet enough, subtly sweet, and not very strong. Perfect for a summer's day. Uh, it's the exact opposite of the raspberry lemon gauche that we're about to yeah. that we're about to have. Uh, but uh, this is why I kind of chose it to be first because I had a feeling that this would go, go pretty well between us. Right. Uh, I don't regret uh, having this as the first beer. Right. Uh, of course, of course. Uh, Corona is not is not a great beer, and it's just because of the skunkiness, uh, especially because of that skunky flavor that. Feels like it should have been a bottle in a brown bottle, not a clear bottle, because that sunlight penetrates that bottle. It changes the entire complexion of the beer, and it's it, you can tell that it's it's skunked by that sun sunlight uh, this sunlight rays. Is my position. Here is uh, this has been aging for over a year. Our aged beer called 120 minute IPA from Dog Shed. This is the exact opposite. This, well, We'll get into that later. But we'll get into that beer some other time. And we can we'll, we will once again review that beer another day yep. on, on this page. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. One and day. Uh, and maybe uh, we can uh, around August before the summer beers uh, stop being in process, we can buy two twelve packs of of uh, of the mix pack and we can bring it to the first tailgate party of the uh, of the season. For you guys to try uh, the gold nail. Blue Moon's uh, all right. Personally, uh, Blue Moon is fine. Uh, it, actually, Blue Moon was my first beer I ever really started to like. Um, it was. I thought it was Samuel Adams. Actually, no. Well, before Sam Adams, Sam Adams changed everything. Like but Blue, Blue Moon was, was the first beer that I I actually liked. Before that was Corona, and I like my family would would drink Corona all the time. So. I really didn't have a choice, uh, but when I found Blue Moon, that became a beer that I uh, I really liked. It was a great starting off beer. It was uh, different. It was it was a Belgian white, and I had never tried a Belgian white before. So uh, always props to Blue Moon for its place in my in my history of of a consumption. I will I will definitely try this. I mean, I'll definitely finish this. Delightful. Absolutely delightful. Here we go with the uh Ooh. Oh bad. nice. Not bad. I've had PBR before. It's okay. I mean, we, we, we've had these beers in the past. We, we, we've had PBR in the past. Literally every beer except Slits and Coke 45. I, I, you know, I, I had mentioned we, we might want to do a beer review of some of the, um, some of the, of some of those beers. Um, 
I, I'm not too closed to doing Ooh. that. Just not exactly mm -hmm. running for, for that. You can definitely smell the raspberries. You can definitely smell the raspberries. Yeah, you kind of put them there. Yeah, yeah, dude, that's okay. It'll all turn back to beer anyway. It's fine. It'll turn back to beer eventually. Oh. <laughs> they just got sprayed with the crap. Oh, 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 you could. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's not bad beer fest. It's light. Um, like it, like the bottle says, it's refreshingly tart with a light fruitness. When you take a sip of it, it goes down smooth. The scent of raspberry is not overpowering. No, no. You know, you know, uh, obviously before I drank it, I I was wondering if this was gonna make me pucker. Uh, you know, because of the lemon flavor, and honestly, it's oh, subtle okay, enough. Right? It, it's they—they they know that it's that you don't want to make it too strong. Uh, five percent as well for this beer. Uh, you know, what? and 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 also fifteen IBUs, and that's not surprising at all because honestly, this beer is not. Does this make sense right here? Some uh, boogies in it. What are you talking about? What, what what are you talking about? What do you what do you see on the uh, uh, on the uh, on the bottle on the on the glassware? Uh, if you see anything that's like around the glassware, it's just a lacing, and there isn't too much lacing on on these beers because there's just not enough fermentable sugars. Just not enough fermentable sugars to to uh, kind of hug the hug the glass uh, like like the maple bacon porter the other day did. Uh, so. I mean, it's just actually you know, I don't know what you're talking about, right? <laughs> if there was a, if Sam Adams had this in a six pack after trying this, I would definitely buy it. Probably not more than two for a while, but like so it would last. But the but yeah, if this was in a six pack, I would definitely buy it. You know what? It, it, it's absolutely uh, not bad. It's it's really balanced. Um, I was worried that the lemon would be overrepresented uh, in a beer like this, uh, but it appears that raspberry. No, I thought that the lemon was going to be more overrepresented. Uh, you know, I was ready to be puckering a little bit uh, from this beer. You know, from the the, the sourness of the beer, and uh, I like Canadian beer too. You know what? I will look up some interesting Canadian beer and get back to you. One of my favorite Canadian beers. The bat blue. That is one a of the best Canadian beer. That's a perfect beer uh, to, to to get off. Um, you know, start. Um, uh, I wonder how many other Canadian beers are out there. You know, some of the some of the beers in the Canada that are that the are two I can think good. of. Right, the two I can think of at the they moment. Also nice. Exactly. Those are the two off the top of my head. Right, right. Of Those course, everyone can see off the top. Oh, oh, that's yeah, like the, that's like the Budweiser of, of Canada. Yeah, know, I wouldn't insult Canada like that. Okay, I'm I'm just saying it's a, it's it's a big beer. It's just a, a big beer in Canada, and uh, uh, definitely uh, I never really tried most of them actually. It's not bad. So maybe uh, I had it when I went to Epcot last year. Open to trying it's something. Good, it's good Canadian beer. Good beer. Very cool. Very cool. Um, see what else that, that they have. I'm totally with you, and we we, we can even expand our uh, reach to uh, other countries uh, for for beers. I know that we usually um, we we are mostly American beers, but you right. know our page is Brews and Reviews 1776, which is so we will um I will an ode to America. I yeah. I think right. You know what else is an ode to America? Beer, of course. Because once Americans got a hold of beer, they took it to uh, boundaries that you know Europeans couldn't necessarily take it. You you have so many breweries in this country right now that are doing amazing work. We have over uh, I want to say two thousand breweries around the world country. You might have even more than that. I we have so many micro breweries out there. Like Holy Mackerel is is one of them. Uh, 
Yeah, holy mackerel. Coasters so. provide it, David. I got it from holy mackerel. He looks one of the bartenders. Cool as hell, dude. Yeah, I remember when uh, holy mackerel did a uh, did a tap takeover uh, at uh, GQ's. Craft house. Oh, yeah, that was uh, a while back. At GQ's craft house, uh, they had done a uh, that was a takeover. That was a while ago. Sure. And they were giving away a lot of uh, free samples. Uh, Labats and Molson are the big ones, exactly. Yep, yep. Molson um, and Labats, big ones. I think they were giving away the free samples. I don't remember if it was before or after they had already opened up the brewery in Tom. I think it was a slightly after, but we saw a representative who's extremely good, uh, Rohrbach, uh, here in Rochester. Hey, Steve, uh, send me an information. Yeah, uh, we'll, we can look it up later. we'll try to find if we can get the beer uh, without having to go on the way, but I know that you are going to oh. the Northeast. Yeah, so I'll uh, see if I'll, Treehouse Brewing is only, Treehouse is only a couple hours from where I'm staying. Or yeah, maybe it's it's, maybe away. it's uh, in the local area around there. Yeah, Tree Hills is like two hours, almost two hours away from there. Like mm. a Google Maps. Oh, okay. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're definitely uh, adventurous uh, beer and uh, beer. Fans, we're open so to we're open to anything. Uh, what is Ove? Or, or Ove? 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 What beer is that? Well, where's uh, where's uh, Ove from? Never heard of that one, but you know, since it's, since you're saying it's trash, I I mean, I can take your recommendation, and if you say it's trash, I I suppose that I I tr I do trust you. Oh, okay, PBR, yeah, PBR. Uh, actually, funny story, uh, Suzanne. I brought PBR one day to a party. I just got the cheapest beer that I could get, and it was just for one of those drinking games and. Honestly, people. What what my friend saw. What my oh, friend saw. She meant uh, PBR. I know, I know, I know. I, I I just I just I just saw the correction. PBR. Uh, <laughs> uh, I brought PBR to a party, and my friends go, "Who brought this PBR to the party?" And I go, "I go, uh, my bad. I was just bringing it for a drinking game and." Everyone was so stunned, and I, I, I drank it, and honestly, I could not even play beer pong with it. I'd rather play beer pong with Bud Light than PBR. I would. I could not, I could not chug that for you know, Bud Light for me. So, I totally agree with you. PBR in the realm of Natty Light and Natty Ice and like Ice but House, all these beers out there that are. I've had Ice House. It's not the worst thing in the world. But if, if I had a choice between PBR and Natty and Light or Natty Ice and Bush, I would take PBR over it. I would. But over those other you, two. You know, funny funny enough, I had never tried any of those other beers. I just kind of gave up. Oh, trust me. I know. I, 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 just, I, I, just, I just didn't even try because I heard so much and the stigma is so big around it. I, by the time that I was trying beer all the time, I had already uh, turned to the craft beer revolution, so to speak. And uh, no, there's no way. <laughs> Not you have, well, yeah, because when you uh, when you ice beer, when you, when you when you brew it that way, it surprisingly creates high alcohol by volumes. It's 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 amazing. You if you, it's one of the things that I never really understood how some of these ice beers. Actually, become so uh, alcoholic because it seems on the uh, on the outside that it's super, you know, thin, thin body. It doesn't make any sense. And uh, well, Susanna, welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. You know, I try not to, to use the. <laughs> I try to calm myself that all the time around you know when we're with other people. But yeah, between me and you. Yeah. I, I, I guess, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I but it, I won't uh, if if someone offers me a beer like, you know, like a Corona at a party. Yeah. Hey, I hey, see. I didn't bring anything. I learned rule of thumb: if you're going to go to a party, bring enough beer for yourself. Bring enough good craft beer for yourself. Thanks, Steve. 
bring enough good craft beer for yourself, and then just bring whatever party beer for everybody else. Now, if someone asks about your beer and you tell them about it, then yeah, just uh, see on here, try it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead yeah, and let yeah. them try it. Just uh, bring beer for yourself that you like. That Interesting. Just bring beer for people that you know they'll like. And if they take an interest in what you're drinking, yeah, they'll ask you about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm always open to... Uh, to giving away some of my beer in, in, in sips or you know or samples, you know, because honestly, I bring some really strong beer to parties, and sometimes people, you know, having a little bit of my beer, kind of saved me from drinking too much of it too. I mean, sure. love beer, lo- love my beer, but I get some really alcoholic beer. I just kind of like I like tell me parties, like I go around, and see me, you know, spreading the word of some of these. Uh, great beers. Craft beer is the way to go. It's a growing um, uh, movement in this country. You, it's a non-stop r- 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 train. It ca- you can stop it. You can really slow it down. Uh, the the uh, Budweiser and Coors, they have no choice but to uh, to create these uh, these new beers out there that that are going to rival them, and they had to give in to uh, the the trends. Uh, Budweiser two years ago during the Super Bowl had um, absolutely um, uh, criticized craft beer in such a in such a way that I had never seen them do on um, on a commercial. And I said, "That's a bad move right there." I mean, uh, don't be surprised, Budweiser, if you go against that. And the other day they did brew this red lager that was decent, but it represents a um, it represents a um, that resignation that they have now to a a certain crafty beer, making a beer that has some flavor. Because hey, you have to do this. This is this is the trends. If you don't do this, then you're just going to lose market value. So they're really hypocritical. But you know, as of now, but how can you blame them? Found it, Steve. Thanks for that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, back to our first beer. I know that um, most of you will really like this beer if you tried the Golden Ale. I uh, I recommend it. I recommend it. Uh, if you want to try the 12 packs of Sam Adams, if you want to be daring and try some some decent beers, I, I think most of them are pretty drinkable, so you're not going to really be... Um, uh, risking, you're not going to be risking the possibility that you might not like it. Uh, so uh, if you get the chance and you want, and you have a fifteen dollars spend, you know, on, on a decent beer pack uh, in summer, then uh, I would say go for it. The raspberry lemon ghost, not bad at all, not too overbearing. Uh, also, uh, pretty uh, tame, and, you know, with, with these flavors that they have. Uh, it's another good beer, and uh, I expect the rest of those beers there to be rather enjoyable, and not insane. Just oh, probably not. There's always a chance that maybe one of them, uh, like summer ale, is pretty strong. That lemon flavor in summer ale. That's ale's part of the reason why I stopped drinking. Summer right, I, I, I'm I'm partial to Sam Adams, and as I don't really care much for it. Uh, but these beers are definitely the stars of. Of this pack so far, so far so as far we can see, and, and we'll see as we move along this summer with Sam Adams uh, mixed pack beer series. Um, uh, we're, we're definitely interested to see the other two beers that are new uh, to this pack, and uh, looking forward to it. Hopefully, it's a sunny day out next time we go. Hopefully, okay. we really want to uh, capture the essence of the summer. Exactly. You know, summer. But we we want to be out there and just uh, soaking in the rays and, and you know having a great summer beer. And I don't think us in Miami we, we haven't been able to do that in the last what well, week. So uh, hopefully yeah. we have a chance. To. Uh, the weather has been shit. Either weather has been shit. And bipolar is. Yeah. You, you got to really get there in time. Like it's only good for an hour, and then the next thing you know. It's not even a summer's day. It doesn't feel like it should be a beach day or something like that. 
Yes, yeah, Susanna, they are. This is their uh, summer. These are all Sam Adams beers, and uh, they come out with a uh, summer pack. They come out with a fall pack. I think the winter pack. We cannot wait to do a review on a winter pack around. Oh, of course. I, well, we're gonna do an Oktoberfest and a winter lager uh, only. Uh, yeah, Oktoberfest. Yeah. This we talk seasonal yeah. beers. Oktoberfest hands down my favorite one. Hands yeah. down, hands down. Oktoberfest uh, is one of the best uh, uh, seasonal beers. It Speaking actually, of Oktoberfest, sorry. We're only. We're only uh, four months to go, actually three months to go until this beer comes back. So I know once it's football season, once August comes around, Oktoberfest is back in session. <laughs> we are not chugging out of that. But uh, these are summer beers, and uh, you're definitely uh, a little bit uh, less heralded, but uh, definitely not uh, too bad. Uh, definitely worth it for, for what it is. Uh, it has a place, and uh, I'm glad that we were able to demonstrate some of these beers to you guys today. Um, I know that the possibility that you guys would like the, uh, the gold nails right here uh, is pretty solid, um, and uh, they're definitely creating uh, more flavors every day. The Sam Adams franchise uh, with Sam Adams uh, company. Is just um, exploding with flavors every year, and the bounds are endless with the, with the flavor combinations that they come up with. It's like they come with, up with four, you know, different, no, even more every year. How many different kinds of I lost over? track. I lost track at this point. It could be more than thirty-five or forty at this point. Sam Adams is still craft. No how big it's they still craft, no matter how big they get. They're still craft, and they, and they still get my respect for being the pioneers of. The, uh, the the craft um, you know revolution that started in the eighties and the early eighties uh, expanding the uh, the view of of uh, beer drinkers past the big three uh, and England of course uh, uh, into this uh, ulterior uh, climate of uh, all these flavors just fantastic can't go wrong. Sam Adams will always have a place, and if anyone tells you that Sam Adams is not craft beer, don't listen, uh, don't listen to them because craft beer is always, as long as it's not, you know, pale bloggers, um, straw in color and made with rice and, you know, corn adjuncts. If it's made with uh, wheat and, or, or, or barley or hops and has a character to it, then it's craft. So, you know. It, it's all about the beer, not necessarily the company. Uh, hey, Bruce. Uh, so I, I, that's what I always, uh, that's all what I always say when, when it comes to it. And I know that in, in your craft beer group, you're, we're in a, um, in a vast craft beer uh, group on Facebook. It's a vibrant community, but we have some individuals that are, are so stringent in their views that they, um, that they feel that uh, craft beer, they put craft beer in this box. Uh, and, 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 and basically, um, once you get uh, too big as a company, it's like, oh, Sam Adams, it's as if you, you've you uh, grown yourself out of the craft beer. And then that's unfair. I, I feel like that's unfair. You know, and, and, and also awesome right. share is my I, I've always said that craft beer is based on how it's made, not Exactly, yeah, exactly. And by the way, you can get craft beer if they want. And I'll buy it. I'll buy it. I bought Red Lager the other day from Budweiser. I don't. I have nothing against Budweiser. I, I just want them to, to try more in what Expand they're doing. Her. They're doing what I told what I what I wanted them to do. <laughs> you know, they're doing. You, you make a good beer. I'm buying it. I might not buy it all the time, but I, I bought it. I bought it once. Get, try it once to try it. Try it once. Like it, buy it again. And then I, I bought it again. If you don't like it, tell it to kick rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and should they continue? Yes. Uh, why not? You know, what I was going to say earlier, uh, what works for some might not work for others. You know, what some people might like this beer, like us, and others might not. Some people like Budweiser. I I've drank Budweiser before. It's not my favorite beer. It's okay. Some beer Budweiser may be. For some, for the guy next door, and not for right. you, that's okay. Right. 
a st- a stellar Artois is still it, is the bomb. It, it is the bomb. It, you know, among yeah. uh, among Euro lagers, I like Euro lagers a lot. Euro lagers are 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 terrific. <laughs> like is. like stellar Artois is one of those uh, Euro lagers uh, that. Just really go well, I, and it's so drinkable, not strong. My dad loves it, and so I no doubt about it. I no doubt about it. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll drink it uh, when I see it. Uh, it's very enjoyable. Get another Belgian beer, like another great Belgian, like uh, like Blue Moon, Hogar. Uh, like Paul Garden, exactly. Um, I gotta admit, I love Warsteiner. Warsteiner, great. Warsteiner. We're talking. We were just talking about Belgian beers the other day, and I, I couldn't think about them. Off the top of my head, but now hey, I got it. Rick. Now, now I got it. <laughs> so, uh, Rick, we were talking about the uh, the golden ale today. I think uh, if you tried it sometime, and we were just talking about when it comes time for your like season, uh, we're gonna try to save some of these golden ales. Uh, they are uh, fantastic. Uh, I really do think that that you'll gravitate to it, and. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, I don't think it's, it will be too off-putting. It, it might be a good replacement for Corona some days. I know that Corona has a place like a tradition. So many beers are like a tradition. Every beer has their place. Every beer has their place, and some beers have their traditions. Like, uh, and, uh, but this is one of those beers that, you know, if you try it once, you might want it again. I'm just saying. So. Hey, I got some Florida Canyon somewhere near. I don't know where the hell I put it. It's in there. Oh, we got we are loaded here. Yeah, look at that. See, Rick, for the canna. <laughs> Soul is good. Okay, okay, wait. Okay, Soul is the replacement, but no, okay. I I agree. Soul is a is a good replacement. You know, uh, I'm just I'm just saying that. Hey, if somebody you... with the same first name as Bruce Willis is telling you. <laughs> So is the replacement. Hey, listen. I, I, I told I totally I totally agree. You know, uh, Modelo. Modelo is a good a, a good uh, Mexican beer replacement. Um, I, I, I totally yes. agree with that. I totally agree with that. Uh, not argue with that. Uh, but uh, I mean, we're talking about a, uh, a summer beer that deserves some 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 praise. You know, nice and easy drinking. So, uh, I, I I recommend it, and we'll we'll try to save. You also recommend seconds. the uh, raspberry lemon ghost too. Yeah, it's it's not over. At all. So, yeah, I, I thought this would be. Yeah, it really a more tart, but it's good. It's it's all decent. I've had the Negro Modelo before. I like that uh, one. That was uh. That I was prefer nice. that over the regular one. I do, I do. I, I like darker beers generally. So it, if I see Negro Modelo. Right away. Hey, um, Danny. Uh, go for it. So, uh, definitely great summer beers that, that everyone's bringing up, and uh, I I totally agree. Um, these are just a uh, lot of maybe, great beers. Too. Maybe the road less traveled. I think is what we're, we're, we're trying to. Uh, it's a good oh, Southern told it's decent. I never had. I never read it, but um, yeah, definitely. Hey, uh, bye bye. Good, good, uh, good, good tries uh, here, um, uh, and it's only day one in our summer mixed pack beer series. Day two will maybe be tomorrow or the next day. We'll, we'll see. And also, uh, this coming Wednesday, I will be at Wakefield Brewery. I'll be at the Jay Wakefield Brewery to do our first uh, um, uh, wakes uh, wake Wakens Day uh, every Wednesday or every other Wednesday. Uh, I will go to Jay Wakefield and I will do a uh, a flight of uh, other new beers down there, and so uh, I can uh, show you some interesting beers down in Winwood. Uh, it's a up and coming brewery. I went down there for the Dan Levitard show event. Uh, it went very well. I uh, actually did a video on it and posted it to this page about two and a half months ago, and uh, that is uh, in the works and. Um, I definitely hope to uh, take a look at what they are coming up with every week. They are a company that is exceeding these uh, expectations every week. They're making they're making new beers just about every month, it seems. <coughs> so uh, definitely, I just to show you guys that uh, in the coming uh, weeks.
So like, yeah, man. I go around with a charm too. No more now. <laughs> so better than that, like everything is better than that. Everything is better. It's 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 at the lowest of of the beer pyramid, so to speak. So uh, I call it the basement of beers. <laughs> Actually, that's whatever below the basement. The uh, I have no clue. Purgatory. 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 That's there. You go. Wait. Way to go. <laughs> All right. So yeah, finishing up. The rest of this beer oh, right I here. Mine, like, I know, I'm doing so much talking. <laughs> now it's warm, and it's still pretty good. Pretty oh, good. And, they, and that's great. If, you're more, if your beer can stay warm on a summer's day and be good, boom. You got a good beer. Mm. But there are some beers you do not great want to get warm. That's Otherwise, just, you might as well just put it back. In the it's break. great. Um, very, very... Um, Refreshing, um, and um, yeah, I, I don't regret uh, having this beer uh, on, on day one. Uh, so uh, yeah, man, uh, everything looks good. Which one is better here? I would say, would you, which one here would, would you say? I mean, they're both good in their own way, and uh, it's really difficult to. I'm to sorry, say, I, right? I, I can't, I can't pick one over the other. Right? Yeah, like both. They're good in their own, in their own way. Uh, um, and picking one over the other would be difficult. It's um, like Sophie's choice in your beer. You, you like you like sweetness. This one you like a little bit of tartness and but still a subtle sweetness to both. Definitely, slightly more tart, but still subtle enough to uh, to make you want more. Um, yeah, um, it it all depends. Um, you can you go with this. You can go with that. You can go with this. Go with this. With that. You can go with that. So. Uh, yeah, it was great to show you guys this. We have uh, some decent beers coming up called the Pale Ale and the uh, and the Hefeweizen. Those are the next two uh, Sam Adams summer beers that are next up in the lineup, and then we'll finish it off with the Summer Ale. We'll be tackling those. In the next couple days. We'll be tackling the, the Summer Ale, but we also have the Boston Lager as well. So we actually, might, no, we don't. Oh, we did not have it in the. Me beer. and my neighbor polished them off last last night. Okay. Hey, no, no, no problem with that either because <laughs> I've had Boston Lager many times over. All that matters is what did how have they changed Summer Ale in the last one in the last year? What how how good is this iteration of of Summer Ale compared to the last uh, one uh, in the last year before? We'll find out. So we'll find out on day three uh, after next time we do a review with the other two. Hey, Rick, speaking of milk. Okay. Speaking yeah, of Miller Lite, for Throwback Thursday, this Thursday, oh yeah, I got something for you. <clears> Though <throat> I won't post it on the page, I'll send it to you. All right. So, uh, have a good night, everybody. Have a good night, everyone. Cheers.